Black Monday, 15th of September, Black History Studies, South Africa Film Festival, week three. We're here to watch the screening of Beyond the Rainbow, which is a very interesting title, and to get some views from the film goers. So let's go and have a look and see what we can see. It, it was very informative. I haven't actually seen a film that went into that much detail about the ANC. Um, it appeared to be um, to, to show more than one perspective. Um, it didn't necessarily make the ANC look bad or good. It made it look like an organization that had um, that was very serious. Um, I think I was very impressed with with the seriousness of the South African rank and file people and, and those in the ANC in terms of their passion and their commitment for what they believed in. Mm, I felt that it, um, it really started wonderfully broad and strategic, giving us this historic uh, view of what's happened in the development of South Africa, then walking through the development of the freedom of South Africa and the development of the democratic nation that is there. Mentioned some wonderful points, very important points. We feel there's still very important points today. And then it sort of uh, began to constrain itself and become kind of prolonged in more of a tactical, political wrangle between the, the, within the ANC. And sure enough, it's behind the rainbow, behind the ANC. But so the end of the film was very tactical and sort of prolonged. And then still left on the table the very present strategic conversations around allocation of wealth, who actually controls resources, financial realities, and understanding from my point of view that you can vote all you like, you can have all the delegates you like, you can move around the place, but if you don't control the resources, then it's almost a mute point. I thought the film was very comprehensive. I enjoyed the film very much, and uh, it told me a lot of things that I didn't know. I actually learned how comprehensive the ANC's struggle is and was. Uh, Number one, I didn't know it was 97 years uh, or more. And um, just how much of a struggle it was for the party in the early days. And lastly, what do you think we can learn from watching that film here in the UK and elsewhere? I think that we can learn that we can disagree without killing each other. What do you think about the fact that the ANC actually tore itself apart, you know, in this country that it's been the forefront of for so long? What do you think about that? I think it's a shame because they've been together so long, they have the same values, they work very hard to um, liberate the people of South Africa. So I think maybe they should put some of their egos aside, some of the politics aside and come together again to work for the people because it's the people that are in the um, shanty towns that are suffering. It's the people that have you no know, the basics in life like running water, schools, hospitals, education. They're the people that actually need these, this group ANC to come together and work together. After watching that, is it like the South Africa you know? Yes, it is. I mean, I was born in the. I was born in 1967, so 1983, 1984, 1985, 1986, 1987. You know, when we, when the schools. I was in school. I was uh, 15, 15 years old, 14 years old when we started up the, the fire that, that that really needed to get South Africa going again. Oliver Tambo, and that's what we used to chant. Oliver, Oliver Tambo, which is which is what I recognise in in the movie. That and Alan Busak. Alan Busak was the forefront to the to the liberation um, of of the youth. You know, he he, he encouraged. And now I'm talking about the coloured population, um, because there there was coloureds fighting. You know, uh, our schools were on fire to, to to get the change for South Africa. And um, it's a wonderful thing. I, I'm not sure. I, I love the movie. I thought it was a bit long. Um, uh, we could have edited it a bit better, but I, I love it. And that, that's yeah, that's the truth of South Africa. And um, and I'm proud of my country. So yeah. The one thing that struck me about the movie and what you were saying is that um, people in South Africa actually sing the politicians' names. Yes. We don't do that here. I love. I love. I love. Um, yes, we have to get the rhythm in it. Be black, we've got rhythm, and we, uh, and it's a beautiful thing. How much do you think the fact that South Africa has focused really hard on not having a violent change, transition, how much of that do you think has, is responsible for the fact that their movement is very slow in terms of change? <laughs> Interesting. 
Um, it's a very interesting question. Sometimes, some people might think I'm naive by saying this. Sometimes I think we can make some powerful changes without violence. Because sometimes when the violence comes, we, generally speaking, are not prepared to make that change that we say we wanted after the violence has ended. And my argument is that we should challenge ourselves, if possible. I'm not an advocate of Martin Luther King, but I am saying that we should challenge ourselves, if possible, to do some deep thinking and some deep evaluation and some deep structuring of our thinking and our actions so that we can regain uh, many of the political apparatus that's been taken away from us um, in many of the countries in Africa uh, that we live in um, and the Caribbean and, 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 and reclaim it without violence. The thing that I'm concerned about is a lot of times when we have used violence to deal with these situations, after the situation, we are not able to restructure adequately so that the thing that we have won remains in our position. Learning about the ANC was very, very educational, very interesting. And then I didn't know that they had a fraction which is broken off, spent off, called COPE. So that was interesting. So that would make me more now go and do my research. And one of the things that hit me was when it came to the point of they went back and focused on the origin of the ANC and the gentleman that actually did the foundation work after Mandela was in prison, etc. I found that they talked about unity. And that was the thing that striked me. That was really good. And all the songs um, is, I can't remember the song now, but it was very catchy and it meant a lot. And it was an insight, so it was great. We just come out from watching the movie Behind the Rainbow and it was a very comprehensive film, very full of polit politics and, you know, struggles mm -hmm. on levels that maybe many people don't get to see on a regular basis. So come and tell us about that film. And that's the beauty of actually watching the film today because I learned a tremendous lot of information from watching the documentary about um, Behind the Rainbow because how would we know in this country what the ANC was about, the different political um, rivalries between two leaders, how they interacted, even the um, contributions of Oliver Tambo. A lot of people don't know that he was actually in exile in Muswell Hill in Haringey. And look how he influenced the other leaders coming up, um, like Thabo Mbeki and also um, Jacob Zuma. A lot of people won't know that on a day-to-day -day basis. That's why that's the beauty of having these film festivals, that people learn about the hidden histories from another country, in particular South Africa, the apartheid movement, what people went through, the political struggles, the ongoing struggles to this day. And it's just beautiful. And the turnout was good today. Uh, different people from abroad, he had a gentleman from um, America came down as well. He had a lady from South Africa. It was just brilliant today. It was just lovely to actually sit down and watch that documentary and look at the history of an organisation coming together. Because you don't really get to look at black organisations and how, how different people interact in an organisation. It was just beautiful today. Very beautiful. Yeah, I was going to say, um, the, the different black factions that we have, different black groups that we have yeah. here in the UK could have yeah. learned a lot yes. watching that film today. Oh yeah, and it's all about coming together, uh, forming organisations. Not, not everybody's going to agree on the same things, but we have to learn to agree, uh, agree to disagree, learn how to communicate effectively and have a goal in mind. Um, we may not agree on the way we're doing it, but as long as we have the goal, the, um, the goal in mind, the different directions that we get there, but we have to be thinking how we're going to get there, what are the strategies, maybe the strategies of old maybe need to be put left, in, left in the past, maybe we need to come up with new strategies, use new technologies um, and use different ways of working. And I love the way that they use music and they embrace their culture in a way they... Um, was organising the of, use of the songs and the dances and I was sitting there like, wow, look at that. That's just Africa. That's the beauty of Africa. We don't have to do what everybody else, the Europeans do, everybody else does. We have our own African story. South Africa has its own, own history, its own cultures, its own songs and they must embrace that, use them songs as well because that's what get the heart of the people together. If it wasn't for the songs, 
maybe the South African um, apartheid movement would have had the momentum and that's the beauty of the film that we're showing next week because it actually looks like the films the actual music the songs the movement the dance all of that came together in order to galvanize the people together and bring that fo- movement forward and oh, it's, just, it's just been beautiful today yeah. okay you spoke speaking about the uh, film next week can you yes. tell us about it because it's the last week next week and it's gone really quickly hasn't it this three weeks it's, it's gone very quickly which is very sad we must, we must do, come back and do more um, but yeah the film we're doing next week was called Amanla um, a revolution in five part harmony which is looking at how different musicians and different songs we're using the anti, uh, anti-apartheid movement going to be um, having contributions from the great Mama Africa Miriam Bebekeba and how she used her music and her song to raise political awareness of what was going on in South Africa. She went into exile and she just kept to the, um, true to the um, game. A few other people um, were involved in terms of music and produ- uh, production and get people to f- sing the songs, to get the movement going on. Because if you, if you were from that era, you would know the songs and that would invoke a reaction in you. Uh, come together and it's amazing when you watch like huge groups of people singing the same song and dancing in the same way and it's just beautiful as well. We can do those things. We can do those things. We, our movements that we have now, we can do those things. And it's just been beautiful. It's been beautiful. Thank you very much, sister. Thank you. Onwards and upwards. Oh, yes.